All right, so um, so let me uh, start the lecture. So now we start uh, analyzing infrared uh, divergences, specifically in QED in this lecture and uh, in the next lecture in QCD. So what will we uh, do? So we have seen um we've, we've talked before that infrared divergences are divergences due to um, low uh, energy so integrals um, integrals on the lower end of the spectrum in the case of and appear in the case of massless uh, particles and uh, we will see that also that they are um, of two types one that's called collinear and one is called soft. Uh, in the case of uh, non-abelian gauge theories, we will have both, but in uh, QED, in this example, we will have um, uh, we will have only soft ones. Um, we will uh, consider so. Since um, this is an infrared divergence, this is a divergence that uh, is due to an integration from zero. We have to put a cutoff at zero in the way we, in the same way that we put a cutoff uh, at infinity uh, for UV divergences. So <clears throat> the first uh, way we'll do it is by um, uh, introducing a photon, a small photon mass. But then we'll do this in dimensional regularization, and uh, I will show you how to how the two are related in a very simple manner to calculation. Um, and uh, and then we will uh, we will have to get rid of these divergences, as we said before. UV divergences are you get rid of them by renormalization but infrared divergences you get rid of them by adding apparently different uh, physical situations uh, so adding a diagram with uh, one less loop but uh, one more uh, physical particle being emitted but a particle of uh, either very uh, small energy uh, in the case of uh, soft divergences or collinear, very small angle, with respect to uh, the particle being with uh, some other particle being emitted. In the case of uh, collinear divergences, um, so um, uh, and then we'll we'll show that uh, indeed by adding these two, the divergences um, disappear, and moreover, it exponentiates. Um, in the so-called Sudakov form factor. All right, so that's uh, uh, in a nutshell what we'll do today. So first, uh, collinear divergences. Already in a, a second lecture of uh, um, of QFT two, we have st we we talked about. Uh, um, well, the appearance of uh, infrared divergences. And uh, the example that I gave to you was a simple one where um, we had two n plus two vertices. And then we had um, n external lines going to the left from one vertex and uh, external lines going to the right from the uh, the other vertex, and then two lines um, joining the two vertices and forming a loop. All right. <clears throat> okay, so the the Feynman the expression of the Feynman diagram will be then lambda squared over two, lambda being the uh, vertex, um, the coupling, 
and the one over two because of the symmetry factor, then integral over the loop momentum Q, and um, 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 and then uh, then we have uh, two propagators inside. So one is I choose to call it uh, Q moment um, the the momentum of the loop uh, Q, and then the other one is Q minus P, where P is the total momentum that comes in from the left. That is the sum of the n external momentum at the vertex. Um, so the infrared divergence in this case, in this uh, diagram, uh, appears uh, under two conditions. If first m squared equal to zero, so the, the mass of the internal loops is uh, zero, and p square, capital P squared is zero, um, which uh, is a condition on the external uh, momenta. So p squared equals zero implies two things. Uh, implies, first of all, that the um, um, well, all right, so let me yeah, let me uh, let me continue. So uh, you'll see what what that implies. <clears throat> anyway, so uh, if m squared equal to zero, then the integral appears like this. So now I have one over q squared. So I reduced the power of q uh, when q goes to zero. But then also. In the other one, we have q squared plus m squared equal to zero. So, um, so we're left with little q squared minus, li minus two little q squared dot uh, capital P squared. All right. Uh, <clears throat> that means that if we are in four dimensions, which is our our uh, uh, that that the thing of relevance for us, uh, and if I put little q dot capital P equal to zero, then um, the integral, so that's a, that's a, uh, a region in the angular integration. Then the, um, uh, the integral contains this factor, integral dq, where q is the, 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 the absolute uh, value of, um, the loop momentum. So integral dq over q, which is log divergent. Well, it's also uv divergent, but more importantly, it's also divergent at um, the lower end at q equal to zero. Uh, professor. Yeah. What's, P, what's q hat and p hat? Uh. No, uh, yeah, I here I meant the directions, right? So, so I have, um, uh, I, I write, uh, well, uh, Q, um, Q mu equal to Q, the absolute value times Q hat, and uh, the same thing for P, right? So here I, I just meant that uh, the, the, the unit vectors, uh, are equal to zero, which so 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 I, I write it this way so that it's clear that we exclude the, the con conditions that the absolute value q is zero or the absolute value p is zero. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> so we see that uh, the divergence then appears. Only in the case of uh, massless uh, external state, because um, 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 well, because I have to have um, this um, q dot p equal to zero, and moreover, as I said, 
it's really uh, q hat dot p hat equal to zero. So the only con way we can achieve that is if p squared e equals zero and if q is parallel with p. Okay. So we have the, we need to have a theory of massless fields, and moreover, the external uh, states have to be uh, collinear with the loop states. All right. Um, but note that um, we also uh, the condition that uh, p squared capital p squared is equal to zero also implies that uh, the external states are parallel themselves because well they're massless now but um, but then uh, the the resulting uh, terms are the terms uh, so p is a sum of pi's and then we, we will have things like pi.pj, which have also need to vanish. So that means that the external state also need to be parallel. So we have a, a divergence that, that comes, an inferior divergence that comes from the fact that all of these uh, momenta are collinear. Now, how do we cancel this? Well, we will say, see at the end, that, and as I said, we will cancel uh, this by emission of a photon, quote unquote, uh, that means a massless particle that's collinear with the external um, line um, from which it's emit emitted. Right? Okay. Now, note that I said, I mean, that. The, the example that I gave here was, well, this diagram with stuff coming here and the stuff coming here. Well, I'm bad at drawing, but anyway. Um, so the point was that there were these vertices with all of them with um, massless, massless uh, fields. Uh, so, so we have massless interacting fields. Uh, now, we don't have that in QED. We have that in QCD where we have um, gluons, massless gluons interacting with themselves. So there's a three-point gluon and four-point gluon uh, vertex. All right, so this collinear divergence will be appearing in QCD, but it does not appear in QED. But anyway, let's... Uh, Let's consider. Let's um, let's see how this looks in um, in uh, um, how the the divergence uh, looks like. So we can calculate uh, this loop. I mean, we we had um, we had in uh, uh, I guess in. Well, 3.35, I guess that's in the third lecture uh, of QC QFT2. We had uh, a formula for this, in, uh, this, uh, this kind of integral, or this kind, if you want. And um, uh, so, yeah, for, for the integral at m equal to 0. And um, uh, we had a formula for general D, and this was this is the result that we obtained, where alpha is a, a Feynman um, uh, parameter. Um, and now this integral, well, from this gamma, well, you see gamma here will be gamma of one over epsilon, so that uh, gamma of epsilon, excuse me. Uh, so that will be proportional to 1 over epsilon. Right? Then there's lambda squared. And then, um, uh, yeah, and then I also have a p to the uh, minus epsilon over 2. d minus 4 is by definition minus epsilon over 2. 
uh, minus epsilon, excuse me, uh, d squared minus epsilon over two. And um, um, and then um, um, and then we need to uh, introduce a dimensional transmutation parameter mu. And uh, we obtain uh, we obtain um, this factor then one over epsilon and then for dimensional resistance p squared over mu squared two minus epsilon over two and expanding this uh, you get one minus uh, epsilon over two log p squared mu squared so multiplying with two over epsilon you get this so you get the the standard. Um, constant one over epsilon uh, divergence in dimensional regularization, which always appears both in um, UV and the IR divergences. But then um, the the important part is this log of a p log of p squared over mu squared, and the divergence is now so um, the. Uh, the important divergence is when um, um, masses, regularization masses, in this case, the dimensional transmutation parameter mu, uh, go to zero. So when mu goes to zero, then where uh, this p squared is fixed, um, then um, uh, these things goes to zero. Uh, these things diverges, sorry. Uh, professor. Uh, yeah, isn't isn't mu fixed some physical scale? Um, uh, then we couldn't put it to zero, bro. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's two ways to interpret it. The reason I said this is because I, I uh, will see later on that if we. Uh, if we compare with um, mass regular mass regularization for the photon, we'll obtain exactly the same factor. Um, so, so mu really is uh, the counterpart part to mu uh, physical in the um, uh, the photon mass, right? So, so that's why that's why I said uh, uh, this. I mean. Yes, you're right. Mu um, in dimensional regularization is fixed, and the way that the way that uh, the thing that's the divergent is one over epsilon, and from with respect to one over epsilon, mu is fixed. But now you could you could say you could have an order of of things. So you can say one over epsilon is most divergent, but then within this factor, which is quote unquote fixed now I take a second limit where mu goes to zero right so that's the way to think about it all right now let's um, let's move over to soft divergences which will be actually the ones that uh, we will uh, we will obtain in QED. So the, um, the, the best basic uh, diverging uh, part of a diagram that will appear is something like this. Uh, two lines with um, a massless line uh, exchange between them. So I have momenta Q1, K1, K2 on uh, this line to the left, and then uh, Q momentum, massless momentum uh, exchange between them, and then K1 plus Q in one, and K2 two minus Q in the other. This is supposed to be continued into some other uh, bigger, um, um, bigger diagram. So, um, for instance, you could say that there's another particle being exchanged here, and then um, the, after that, you have external line. 
or we will see that we can actually iterate this. Um, <clears throat> so the, the, the way we're, we're, we're thinking about this is, is about QED, but, um, but uh, for simplicity, uh, we'll think of the uh, scalar QED, where we uh, change the, where we exchange the, um, the, the fermion, the electron with a uh, complex scalar, right? <clears throat> um, <clears throat> and uh, moreover, let's consider the case, uh, also for simplicity, let's consider the case uh, of uh, the scalars being massless. <clears throat> Um, all right, so the so this this particular part of the diagram will be what? So there's um, so so if we if you consider consider this as um, um, part of uh, a diagram, then here to the right we have propagators, right? So this is a propagator with momentum k1 plus q, and this is a propagator of momentum k minus k2 minus q. And then there's the the uh, the, the massless um, propagator uh, q. So yeah, so the, the fact that the line are 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 um, the the uh, the, the complex scalar li um, lines are uh, massless, it's irrelevant. So whether we put n equal to zero or not, uh, it doesn't matter. So let's say then we have this propagator with uh, mass m and momentum k plus q, k, uh, k1 plus q. Then um, this massless propagator with uh, q, then this uh, momentum uh, propagated with momentum um, q minus k k two minus q or um, and um, mass m. Now putting um, um, so considering that uh, the k one so. The, the particle to the left is external, so it's on, uh, on shell. Then uh, I have that k1 squared plus m squared is equal to zero, and also k2 squared plus m squared is equal to zero. So then we're left with this particular integral. Um, again, a leading term with uh, various q squareds, and then uh, subleading terms with q dot k one here and q dot k two here. All right, so uh, so now we're thinking of a uh, divergence, but um, um, we're, we're thinking of a uh, divergence, but uh, not necessarily. Um, depending on the orientation of the of the photon, right? So before we were thinking about uh, particles being collinear, but so in particular we had q dot uh, external momentum p was equal to zero. But here q dot k one or q dot k two doesn't need to be zero. In uh, any case, if here we have d equal to four, then we have uh, d four q divided by q squared times q times q, so q to the 4. So it's divergent. It's, again, log divergent at q equal to 0. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so the divergence then only appears from uh, the modulus of q being equal to 0 which amounts to both small energy and small momentum. 
because the particle is is uh, massless. Um, <clears throat> so this is called since it's, it's uh, for soft virtual uh, massless particle in a loop. <clears throat> Um, is called a soft divergent and is uh, present uh, both in um, in um, QCD and in QED. Uh, it's always present in the presence of uh, massless particles. <clears throat> now, as a, a kind of comment, I will note that in uh, non-abelian gauge theories, which we'll, we'll start in the next uh, lecture in more detail, uh, we have, as I said, we have both soft and collinear infrared divergences. So um, when going to dimensional regularization, a di divergence uh, has a leading uh, 1 over epsilon, as, as we noted before and here. In this lecture as well. So we had the 1 over epsilon for uh, collinear uh, divergences and for soft divergences we will also have another 1 over epsilon. So together we'll have a leading 1 over epsilon squared. And then we also noted, which is again a, fe a feature of, uh, of uh, dimensional organization, that uh, you have uh, this factor. So you have momentum to epsilon, no power of uh, eps, epsilon times something. And then um, we have to introduce, uh, to, to preserve uh, dimensions, I have to introduce a dimension transportation parameter mu. Uh, so we have p squared or mu squared to ep epsilon times some, power, some number. So let's say uh, so instead of uh, mom momentum squ squared, what will be relevant, in fact, in, uh, um, well, let's say at, yeah, uh, so, sorry. Uh, so at one loop, so one, we were talking here about one loop divergence. If, if we have um, several loops, we'll have several of these things. So uh, each one will come with some divergence. <clears throat> but at least at one loop, I have this 1 over epsilon squared. And then um, in Niamh's theory, we'll have this. So we'll have a loop and then things coming out. So let's say I have one momentum coming out, another momentum, another momentum, and so on. And uh, Let's say this is momentum i. Uh, sorry, <laughs> cannot draw very well. Then i plus one. Ah, well, I can draw it. I and i plus one. Anyway, um, then uh, I'll I connect uh, I construct the invariant. Uh, Momentum s i i plus one is is k y k i plus k i plus one squared, and what we'll obtain will be um, this factor. So instead of uh, here in the collinear um, case, we obtained p squared, where p squared were uh, the sum of the external momenta to the left. Uh, let's say incoming momentum moment also. Uh, here we'll, we'll get uh, the sum of uh, uh, consecutive momenta. Now, in general, I would get sum of various uh, momenta. But then also the in general, in, but also in this case, um, uh, this uh, term would be subleading. Um, so the point is, if we consider a, a, a planar diagram like this one, where the, the lines um, never cross themselves, um, 
then uh, the leading divergence will only uh, contain this consecutive momentum. So SII plus one, and then divide by the mu squared to the power epsilon. And by uh, expanding this, we will obtain the leading one over epsilon squared, and then one over epsilon times log S upon mu squared. And the finite part will be log squared S i i plus one over mu squared. So, so that's that's the uh, infrared divergence. Uh, that's the formula for the infrared divergence in the Young Mills case, in the planar for planar diagrams. <clears throat> now, in the case of QED, we'll obtain what we'll obtain for this. Uh, for something similar will be just one over epsilon log some invariant divided by mu squared. All right. Um, so, as I said, there are uh, two uh, ways to deal with this uh, infrared um, divergence. One is uh, photon mass, the other is um, dimensional regularization, and the two are related in the sense that the only difference in dimensional regularization, you get one over epsilon, and otherwise you relate mu um, dimensional transmutation parameter with mu photon, which is the photon mass. Um, So we'll see that that will obtain. Um, yeah, just as a, as a final comment, um, I noted that this is the divergence that will obtain at one loop. The leading part is one over epsilon squared, one over epsilon coming from soft, one over epsilon coming from collinear divergence, but at L loops, um, we have uh, one over epsilon to the power two L, where L is the number of loops. <clears throat> okay. Um, so the specific, uh, the specific uh, QED example that we're looking at is the infrared divergence associated with this uh, vertex, the vertex of um, uh, of one fermion line, so one in, in let's say one incoming electron, one outgoing electron, or well, if you cross it, you can think of incoming electron and positron or something, and then uh, also a um, photon, outgoing photon, or incoming. Um, <clears throat> so, so that's the zeroth order or three uh, diagram, and that's you know finite, of course. But the infrared divergence that we're interested in is at one loop, and one loop correction to this. Uh, we know already what it is. We, we actually um, talked a little bit about it. Um, it's a photon line being exchanged between the two fermion lines. And this is uh, uh, keeping uh, in, uh, uh, in the same, uh, it, this is con consistent with what I said before, that uh, the divergence, the soft divergence, uh, which is the case for QED, is uh, related to a photon line being exchanged between two lines. Here, uh, I, I, for simplicity, I consider complex scalars, but the same is true for fermions. OK. <clears throat> so, uh, so let's consider that the, the, the full uh, quantum mechanical vertex for QED that I, I will call gamma mu capital gamma mu alpha beta. Um, 
So let's say the convention was what? P1 coming in, P2 coming out for the fermions, and uh, and the photon uh, and Q um, photon coming in with momentum Q equal P2 minus P1. Well, sorry, uh, I should have been. No, oh, yeah, yeah, P2 minus P1, yeah. Um, so by Lorentz invariance, the, this general um, vertex can only be uh, something proportional to either, uh, so either something constant, that is the, the gamma, gamma matrix, gamma mu, or it could be, um, uh, something proportional with the momentum P2 or momentum P1, right? These are the two momenta that are available. But another way of saying it is uh, that it would be proportional to either the uh, sum of um, P1 plus P2 or with the difference of P2 minus P1. That's another way of, uh, of, uh, of rewriting the same thing. But uh, we've seen before that the vertex have to, has to uh, satisfy the Ward-Takahashi identity, meaning that it should, should be transverse. So if I multiply with uh, the photon uh, momentum, Q mu, we should get zero. So Q is equal to P2 minus P1, so gamma mu is P2 minus P1 should be zero. Uh, now, when I multiply with the sum, I get zero. But then the the only relation then is a with uh, gamma mu times p two minus p one plus c p two minus p one squared is equal to zero. Um, all right, then. We also have to re remember that this vertex amount has fermion indices alpha, beta, but these fermion indices cannot appear in physical processes, cannot appear by themselves. So they are usually between the external, um, so, so this is a full quantum mechanical vertex. So these uh, appear between the uh, full um, fermion um, external, uh, external uh, lines, uh, u bar of p2 and u of p1. So then if I multiply, so if in here, I always have u bar p2 to the left and u of p1 to the right, then we note that um, p2 minus p1 mu times u mu, u bar mu, p2, gamma mu, u p1 is zero on shell because uh, we have the Dirac equation. So the Dirac equation, um, so if I, so I, I break this into a P2 part and a P1 part. So P1 part, uh, then I have P1 mu times gamma mu. So P, P1 slash U of P1 equal to zero on shell, right? That's the Dirac equation. But then also the Dirac equation bar is to u bar u bar p2 times p2 slash, which is the first term equal to zero. So this is zero by the Dirac equation. So I can just ignore in this equation, I could just ignore the a term. And I can just say that c is equal to zero. So that means that the physical vertex, the at least the vertex that appears in uh, in uh, physical um, calculations, uh, will only have A and B. On the other hand, we have also the Gordon identity, which is sometimes written uh, as two equations and sometimes at the average, uh, uh, as the average of the two, which is this following one. So, um, 
So if I have uh, u bar p2 gamma mu u of p1 um, multiplied by m, so this is the, the, the part proportional to a in the physical situation. Um, this can be rewritten as uh, p1 mu u bar p2 u p1 uh, minus part proportion with sigma mu nu. So minus i u bar p2 sigma mu nu p1 nu u of p1. But I could also, instead of writing this, I could write plus and here uh, exchange p1 nu with p2 nu. So sometimes it's also written as the average of these two, meaning, um, oh, yeah, and here also p2. So I can use the average with p1 mu plus p2 mu over 2m here, and here um, um, the average uh, would be uh, so p2 minus p1, which is q. So i sigma mu nu q, no, q nu over 2m. All right, so this, this form uh, is useful now because it means that, uh, so we, 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 we said that in the general form for capital gamma mu, the, the vertex, C is equal to zero, so I have part with gamma mu, a part with p1 mu plus p2 mu. So I can, I, I can in exchange by the Gordon identity, I can exchange the part with p1 mu plus p2 mu. This part with uh, a part, uh, a component proportional to gamma mu. So a, a part, I can change the coefficient a. I can remove the coefficient b, but then change the coefficient a and introduce instead a part proportional to sigma mu nu q nu. Okay, so after all of this, I can define, I can say that the physical vertex gamma mu can, has, can have a part proportional to gamma mu and the part proportional with sigma mu nu q nu over 2m. Of I sigma mu nu q nu over 2m of this. So the first uh, coefficient uh, is called f1, is a function of q squared. Uh, and the, the second is called f2. These are st structure functions f1 and f2 of q squared. OK. <clears throat> Uh, we've considered this one on one loop gamma mu uh, in uh, le lectures six and eight, but uh, we've we've ignored the infrared uh, divergence. We we said at some point that uh, this would be there would be a part that would be divergence and we'll not consider it there because. We haven't reached infrared divergence yet, so now we'll do it. Uh, well, we'll redo some of the steps uh, in Minkowski space with a slightly different parameterization, and we'll we'll see how to deal with this infrared divergence. <clears throat> uh, so. The, so the uh, final diagram is this one, as I said, P1 coming in, P2 coming in, here uh, P2 coming out, and then photon line Q, P2 minus P1 coming in. And then I introduce, uh, so in this loop, I introduce another photon uh, exchange, but I, I say that the initial momentum, Fermion momentum is Q, is K, K uh, then the final momentum is k plus q. And then the photon line is p1 minus k. Okay. So we're int interested in um, 
this uh, physical momentum between uh, u bar p2 and u of p1. And the Feynman, Feynman rule for this then is as written here. So there's, uh, uh, well, there's a propagator for this photon with uh, momentum t1 minus k. We're, write, we're writing this in uh, Minkowski space, so with minus i epsilon in the denominator. Uh, so this is the photon uh, propagator. And then, uh, and then I have, uh, we're going uh, against the Fermion line, so you, ha you have U bar of P2. Then uh, here we have the vertex I, uh, I uh, sorry, uh, E uh, gamma nu. Then the fermion uh, propagator with uh, momentum K plus Q. Then another E uh, gamma nu, I'll call it, I guess. Uh, no, the first one I call gamma nu, and the second one I call gamma nu. Um, and then uh, another propagator, fermion propagator with momentum k. And then the final, uh, the final uh, vertex is called E gamma rho and u pi v1. Well, we, we make the contractions and write it like this. And then we do the final parametrization for the three propagators. So in the denominator, I have uh, these three um, um, momentum squared, uh, yeah, pro propagator type thing. So momentum squared plus some mass squared minus I epsilon. And, um, and I write one over delta one plus delta two, one over delta one, delta two, delta three as three moment, uh, three Feynman param parameter integration, delta of the sum of param uh, Feynman parameters minus one, and one over uh, K tilde squared plus some uh, combination minus I epsilon to power three. Uh, k tilde here is uh, a, um, a shifted k, k, k plus alpha 2 k q minus alpha 3 p1. Um, and well, I guess, I'm not sure. Yeah, f was equal to this one, alpha 1 alpha 2 q squared plus uh, 1 minus alpha 3 squared m squared. And um, <clears throat> And we also have to consider, so here we have various, um, so in the numerator we have various combinations uh, of uh, momenta and, and constants as well. So there is a part with gamma mu. Um, um, but uh, in terms of momenta, and more specifically in terms of the loop momentum k. In here, in here we have a term without momentum, there's a term with, with one momentum, and there's a term with two momenta. So <clears throat> we note that by Lorentz invariance, the, the one with one momentum up is zero because, well, this thing, um, I mean, f is uh, does not have a Lorentz index, uh, so the only possibility in here is for this to be zero. Um, and uh, if it's k, uh, k tilde mu k tilde nu, it has to be uh, proportional to a Lorentz invariant, um, so that uh, g mu nu. So then by going back, it's, you see it should be actually one fourth g minu k tilde squared. So, uh, so you reduce then the um, inter loop integral to only scalar loop integrals. 
uh, one with nothing in the numerator, one with uh, k squared, k tilde squared in the numerator. And then we have seen that after some algebra, we wrote that as uh, loop integration, Feynman parameter integration, delta function, then this, um, this factor that comes from uh, the Feynman parameterization, one over k tilde squared plus f plus i epsilon to the cubed. And then we have what we expected. So we have u bar of p2, u to the left, u of p1 to the right. And in the middle, we have k gamma mu times something and i sigma mu nu q nu over 2m times something. And that something is a combination of uh, loop momentum, k tilde, uh, external momentum, k, and mass, uh, uh, external momentum, uh, q, and uh, mass, m, and the uh, final parameters, of course. Uh, so then you need to, this full vertex needs to be UV regulated, but we'll ignore it. Um, well, we've um, we've uh, we've done some uh, part of it um, before. Uh, well, we'll not uh, we'll ignore it at this point. But later on, we'll introduce uh, a subtraction procedure, uh, renormalization condition. Um, and we'll note that the part with uh, k tilde squared in the numerator, this thing is uh, UV um, divergent because we have d4 k tilde, k tilde squared, so k tilde to the power six upstairs. And then downstairs we have, uh, we have this k tilde squared to the cube, so k tilde is six. So this part, so this uh, integral is um, UV divergent, but uh, that's not interested for us. Um, what's interested uh, is the part without k, uh, uh, k tilde squared in the num numerator, which in lecture eight we call gamma one B. That is UV finite. However, we will, it will contain uh, infrared divergence. Now, um, <clears throat> now uh, performing the Vick rotation um, on a, a formula from lecture three and putting uh, d equal to four for the part of the integral that is UV finite, so uh, ignoring this gamma one A, which corresponds to K tilde squared in the numerator. Um, <clears throat> um, so we have for this constant part, so yeah, all of this, thing is is constant in terms of so in terms of k tilde right so we have all of this is independent of k tilde and all of this is also independent of uh, k tilde so um so the integral of the loop integral is just uh, d4 k k tilde over k tilde squared plus uh, something uh, to the power n and then uh, the integral is this one for um, in the, in our case is n equal to three um, and uh, and we note for later use that uh, the integral in d dimensions for n equal to three is given by this formula. 
<clears throat> okay, so substituting this, uh, this formula in here, we get, um, so, so, so this is the formula from lecture three, but now instead of uh, delta, we have here F plus uh, minus I epsilon, right? F minus I epsilon and N equals three. So substituting that, we see we have one over F minus I epsilon, but uh, that's uh, irrelevant. Uh, to n minus two, which is one, so one over f here, and uh, and what we have, well, we have this part with gamma mu times something independent of the loop momentum, and the part with i sigma mu nu q nu over two n uh, multiplied with something independent on the loop momentum. Right, so that's what we have in here. Um, oh wow, uh, I have a, a, a typo here. It should be, here, there should be U of P1, right? I forgot to put this u of p1 to the, to the right. So I have u bar of p2 to the left and u of p1 to the right of this expression. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> then we note that, uh, um, that this expression that multiplies, um, that multiplies gamma mu is, uh, is the structure function f one the one one b the one loop b part of it because we've we've uh, taken out the u v dovern part that was uh, gamma gamma one uh, a we only kept gamma one b um, and then the other part so this part is uh, F2. And so this is F1. This is F1, this is F2. And it will turn out that uh, F2 uh, will not contain uh, infrared divergence, but F1, uh, F1, 1B, so this part will contain. So let's, uh, to, to, to see that, let's, consider, let's calculate this F1B at, um, in the case where uh, the photon momentum um, is massless, Q squared equal to zero. So <clears throat> we have the integral over uh, finite uh, parameters, alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, Three, then the delta function, and then uh, uh, yeah, q squared equal to zero. So this one is not here, and then we have just one minus four alpha three plus alpha three squared times m squared. Um, yeah, so. Uh, so this is F1, 1B divided by M squared, this integral. <clears throat> I do the delta function. So I replace uh, alpha two, sorry, alpha, I, uh, I replace alpha one with uh, one minus alpha two minus alpha three. Then the integral over alpha two is until one minus alpha three. Um, uh, 
um, yeah, and I, I had also f equal to this one. I replace uh, inside f what that is. And um, so the, the point now is that I have uh, integral of alpha 3 of 1. So there's a term here. There's a divergent term here. So there's a part with 1 minus alpha 3 in the um, uh, in the numerator and, and with 1 minus alpha 3 squared in the denominator. So all of uh, all in all, part with one ma one over one minus alpha three. Okay, so so at this upper uh, integration limit of over alpha three, at one, I have integral d alpha three. Um, uh, the coefficient there is three minus alpha three, but near one, so two. Uh, sorry. Sorry, I think I did something wrong. No, it's, it's sorry. Uh, Yeah, sorry, I, I have to actually expand this uh, better because uh, so the leading term will be minus two times. plus 2 times 1 minus alpha 3, that goes to 0. Yeah, it's actually minus 2 over 1 minus alpha 3 squared. Uh, yeah. It's not a log divergence. It's a 1 minus alpha 3 divergence. Um, Well, okay. The po important point is that it's a it's a divergence near alpha three equal to one. I think uh, I think I, I just have a, a typo here. I think it's supposed to be squared because the the leading divergence is minus two over one minus alpha three squared. <clears throat> but when you do the integral over alpha two, the square cancels, right? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, 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 that's, that's the point. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, this integral gives 1 minus alpha 3. Yeah, sorry. That's right. Thank you. Yeah, so the integral of alpha, alpha 2 gives just 1 minus alpha 3. That cancels the square. Yeah, good. Um, <clears throat> So, um, so then we, we see that we have an uh, infrared divergence. Um, so there are, of course, as always, two options. One, to uh, regularize using dimensional regularization, which uh, we saw uh, before that it's uh, the most commonly used. But for comparison's sake, uh, and also to clarify the, the, the reason why we should uh, take mu going to zero in the, uh, we should think of mu going to zero in the um, dimensional regularization uh, calculation. Um, 
we will introduce a small uh, photon mass uh, mu photon, which is another possibility. So if the photon is massless, then uh, we will not have, uh, we will have an inferior divergence, but if, if it's massive, we will not. So that's one way to um, regularize. But then the photo propagator, instead of being uh, one over uh, k squared, k minus p1 squared, minus epsilon, is the same, but in the numerator I add mu photon squared. <clears throat> um, but then uh, in the uh, Feynman parametrization, I have one over delta two, delta two, delta one, delta two, delta three. Um, 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 but uh, well, yeah, I don't have the general formula here, but the general formula here um, involves um, Alpha, alpha two, al delta two, and plus alpha three, delta three, and uh, and so there's alpha three, delta three in uh, in F, right? So uh, so uh, this is delta three. So I added a term with mu mu photon squared into delta three. So the effect then on F is to add this uh, alpha three times uh, mu photon squared. Um, so one more thing that we need to do is to consider the effect also of the UV uh, regularization. The point is we've, uh, We've avoided the one a part of um, um, we've avoided the one a part of uh, of the ver vertex, which was UV divergent, but uh, by regularizing this the UV divergence, I also um, modify the one b part. Uh, so the, the regularization uh, always uh, changes um, all the terms, all the final diagram. Uh, so we impose the normalization condition that the, the full quantum vertex uh, gamma mu at q squared equal to zero uh, is equal to uh, the classical vertex, the tree vertex, gamma mu. So that subtracts the UV divergence in uh, in the one one uh, a part, but it also subtracts something to the one b part. Namely, instead of uh, instead of the structure functions one uh, b at q squared, I have to have the same minus the structure function at q squared equal to zero. So that means that um, the uh, infrared divergence when mu, mu photon squared goes to zero <clears throat> is this uh, uh, substructure uh, function of Q squared minus the structure function of, uh, uh, so we're looking at 1B squared, uh, at the 1B part, which is infrared divergent. But uh, in it, I also subtract the part corresponding to Q squared equal to zero. So this was the part depending on Q squared, and then Q 
squared equal to zero removes this. So I subtract this term. So yeah, removes this and removes this. So I subtract this, which is equal to this. Okay. Uh, now the infrared divergence, um, we saw that it comes from the alpha three approximately equal to one region. But since I have delta of alpha one plus alpha two plus alpha three minus one, if this is approximately zero, then alpha one and alpha two are also approximately zero. So that's the region of integration in the Feynman diagrams that uh, for the Feynman parameters that we're interested in. So therefore, um, since the infrared divergence comes from the denominator be being zero, in the numerator, I can sub substitute these values. I can substitute alpha three is one and alpha one and alpha two is zero. If I'm, if I'm only interested in the infrared divergence. <clears throat> um, and the, the same for the regulators. So if the regulator is when this goes to zero, the divergence is when this thing goes to zero, then uh, also I can uh, substitute whatever multiplies it with uh, its uh, limit part. So, so that divergence is, is uh, due to mu, mu photon squared equal to zero. So uh, this would be multiplied by alpha three, which is one plus one minus alpha three. But I can just keep the one because the one minus alpha three is a further subleading term. All right, so um, <clears throat> so doing that, doing, doing all that, the infrared divergence of uh, f one of the structure function f one is given by this much simpler integral. Uh, and now to do it, I uh, make a change of variables. Alpha two is one minus alpha three psi because one minus alpha three was was the divergent um, element. And then W is one minus alpha three. Uh, this has Jacobian one minus alpha three, that is W. <clears throat> so substituting, uh, substituting this in the uh, structure function f1, we get um, we get this uh, much simpler um, integral, in which I have uh, dw squared um, over uh, w squared plus something, um, or the w squared plus something. Uh, uh, so, so that's uh, and W goes to um, um, so W is one minus alpha three, so uh, goes to zero. So I, I can, uh, I can do the, uh, I can do the integral over w squared, and obtain this log. So it, uh, I shift w squared by, uh, I'm, well, I multiply by this, and I shift by uh, the, uh, the corresponding thing, and so it's something like integral d of something over the same something. So this would be a log. So I get the resulting uh, thing is this log here. And here, the same thing, we get a log. 
<clears throat> now I'm still left with the integral uh, over Xi from zero to one. But uh, the one thing that I want for now to, uh, to point out is that um, I have in the log, I have something with m squared plus something with q squared divided by mu physical squared. So that seems to be um, my uh, divergent, my divergent uh, uh, object. Because the, 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 the rest, the integral, well, the integral of xi at mu physical uh, fixed is not divergent anymore. Right? Uh, well, let's look here. This thing is constant, that, and then this one just gives one. And here, um, the, in the denominator, I have m squared plus psi times one minus psi times something. So this one uh, goes to zero, but this one is finite. So the whole thing is finite. The same thing here. So, um, so the final integration of xi is not divergent if mu physical is fixed. All right. So uh, let's see now the dimensional regularization calculation. So <clears throat> the first observation that I want to make is that we've always defined d uh, equal four minus two epsilon with epsilon positive in the case of UV regularization. Uh, so epsilon positive uh, regularized the UV divergence. Um, but uh, in the case of the infrared regularization, um, actually we would need to have epsilon negative in order to regularize. Let's see this in a simple typical um, uh, integral. So the typ typical integral in dimensional regularization that we have is integral d d k, where d goes to four, over k squared, right? Uh, this would be a log divergence, right? <clears throat> so uh, so in, in, in terms of, um, of the modulus, so th this is here, d d k is, uh, the integral over all the components, but in terms of the modulus k, this is integral from zero to infinity, dk over k to the five minus d. So you can easily see that in order to regularize the, the part where k goes to infinity, so the uv divergence, I have to uh, have um, d less than uh, four, right? Because then I have integral of uh, the integral has dimensions of one over k to the something to the something positive. <clears throat> Whereas in order to uh, regularize the um, the the infrared diversion, the k, k equal to zero divergence, I need the opposite. I need that uh, uh, dimension is higher than four. So that I have integral uh, of uh, the dimension of the integral is of k to something positive, which goes to zero. All right. So that's what I um, uh, what I uh, uh, described here. So the point is that uh, in the way we uh, uh, in the way we we regularize this particular integral, we have that epsilon uh, in the UV is minus epsilon in the IR for regularization purposes. All right, so then 
uh, I will define, because of this, I will define d equal to 4 plus 2 epsilon in, uh, in the integral that was divergent in, uh, well, in this, uh, in this uh, integral that uh, the generic integral for n equal to 3 that we're interested in. Um, and uh, <clears throat> um, uh, so so this and this is our regularization now. Instead of introducing uh, the photon mass as before, so then the numerator. So you see, in here, I have one over the so. Uh, so, in the, uh, after Feynman parameterization, I had this uh, denominator one over k tilde squared plus delta to the three. Uh, but after doing the loop integral, I have one over delta to um, uh, to something, right? To something uh, non-zero. Sorry, something different than two. Uh, where is it? So, so now I have instead of uh, one over f one in the denominator, I will have one over f one to the power one minus epsilon. Instead of uh, sorry, instead of one uh, one over f, I have one over f uh, min minus epsilon. To the power one minus epsilon. But uh, again, the uh, as usual, the Feynman integration parameters um, uh, divergent uh, divergence comes from the same integration area. I mean, this is obviously not uh, dependent on on how I regularize the um, uh, the infinity. Um, So this is still from alpha three gone approximately one, which means also alpha one approximately zero. So, so we really we can just repeat the same same steps. So, um, so in here I I wrote uh, one over f, and uh, I had uh, in in um, in the regularization with photon mass. The only thing that happened is I added a term to f, which was alpha three mu photon squared, right? But so, but now instead of this, I have instead of one over f, I have one over f to the one minus epsilon, right? But um, but then uh, I can re to do the integration over uh, the final parameters alpha one alpha two alpha three. I repeat the same steps that I did here. So I also note that the infrared divergence comes from F1b, and moreover, uh, I have to subtract uh, the the q squared the q squared equals zero part because of the randomization condition. So I get up to here, and I also substitute in the numerator. Um, alpha three is one, and alpha one and, and alpha two are zero. So I also get to this, and so really, I again get to this integration. The only difference now that instead of having the uh, uh, having uh, plus mu physical squared somewhere, I have one power one minus epsilon. Uh, in the denominator. So the only thing I get now is because of this dimensional uh, um, imbalance, I have m squared to the power uh, epsilon upstairs. And then I have to introduce the uh, dimensional uh, transmutation parameter mu, mu squared. So I have mu squared of m squared of mu squared to the power epsilon, right? 
and then um, because of um, um, because of the integral of a uh, w squared, so I shift again w squared. Um, so I'll have uh, w squared integral dw squared plus m squared over uh, over w squared plus m squared but now to the power one minus epsilon. So um, this also generates a, um, uh, sorry. Yeah, this also generates a one over epsilon, um, one over epsilon uh, uh, divergence. But now, if you compare with the, uh, so now in order to compare with the previous uh, calculation in uh, um, with photon mass uh, regularization, and note that I can expand this m squared over mu squared to the epsilon. Sorry, this one over epsilon times this. I can expand as one over epsilon plus log um, yeah, it's actually m squared times this thing to the epsilon. So I have log m squared plus q squared psi 1 minus psi over mu squared. And in the first term. And in the second, I have uh, 1 over epsilon plus log m squared over mu squared. So, uh, so, I, so now, comparing with the previous result, I see that I had the same logs. And I have also log squared q squared plus psi 1 minus psi over mu squared. And here also log m squared over mu squared. The only difference is that in the dimensional regularization case, I have also a leading term that was uh, divergent in epsilon going to 0. But if I remove this, this term, I still get the same logs, which would also be divergent if mu goes to 0. So can, I can really um, identify mu with mu photon. Okay, um, so now let's go back to the uh, photon mass regularization and define this the first integral of a psi. Uh, so this integral of the psi over, over this thing. Sorry, uh, the psi over this times this thing as, um, sorry, where is it, uh, as fir of q squared. Why this, this? Because this is multiplied by log m squared plus q squared times psi 1 minus psi over mu physical squared. This doesn't, uh, doesn't vary too much. It's a log. Um, and in, in any case, for in a case when when uh, the mu physical squared goes to zero, it doesn't matter too much what I have up here, whether I have m squared or q squared. Um, so what I will I will say I will I will write this as log q squared or m squared over mu physical squared, and then it's multiplied by this. Fir of q squared. So 
the structure function at tree level was one because that's how we define it. But then at the one loop is this integral times times here alpha over two pi. Uh, Uh, alpha over two pi. Uh, what is this? Twenty four. I think this is a. I think this is an error. I'm not sure why twenty four here. I, that, I think it's. I think this is a typo. Um, I need to check. But otherwise, is one minus alpha over two pi times this integral times log of q squared or m squared or m physical squared. Um, now, in the, for, the, for this uh, integral fir of q squared, you can see that uh, in the limit where q squared goes to infinity, most, the, most of the integral comes from uh, the endpoints where psi is approximately zero or one. So, uh, so this denominator in the denominator, this is uh, zero. It is replaced by n squared. But then I have this q squared here. Uh, so, so the integral then is. Um, uh, is so integral from zero d psi q squared over q squared psi plus m. This is uh, the part that comes from uh, psi approximately equal to uh, uh, to to zero, and then the car part where psi is approximately equal to one uh, is this one. So the sum of these two things gives a uh, log, is approximately equal to log q squared over m squared. <clears throat> so we can, uh, so, so then we can, we can say that um, in the limit where uh, q squared goes to infinity, the structure function f1 at one loop, um, which was uh, equal to this, um, was equal to this at uh, uh, exactly, but. Uh, I uh, I can split it into um, into two uh, two parts that two main parts and these were um, these together gave this log of q squared over m squared and uh, and. Um, uh, so in, t in terms of uh, the structure function, it was still multiplied by alpha over two pi. So yeah, this is not a, this is alpha. So this is, so um, we had alpha over two pi log, log, square, log uh, of um, q squared over m squared. Um, oh no, sorry. Yeah, here. Sorry, here. I just showed that the, the remaining remaining part gives uh, gives. Uh, yeah, the remaining part is is subleading. Sorry. Uh, yeah, that was obvious already. No, uh, the point is that in the. Uh, in the um, um, structure function f1, we get one minus this coefficient alpha over two pi. Then 
fir of q squared when q squared goes to infinity goes to log of q squared over m squared, as we shown here. And then I have this log of q squared over m mu physical squared. OK, so this double log is called a Sudakov double log. And, uh, um, and we note that this one, this log is, is uh, infrared divergent, whereas the log coming from FIR is physical. I mean, it might be divergent if Q squared goes to infinity, but that's a different uh, next, you know, uh, we do that after doing the first uh, divergence. But uh, we don't even need to. I mean, Q squared is fixed in any way. Um, it's mu squared going to zero, which needs to be uh, really uh, performed. Um, <clears throat> all right. Uh, Yeah, and dimension and regularization, the same thing appears, obviously. All right, uh, now let's go to, to see how to cancel, um, how to cancel the infrared divergence by photon emission. So as I said, um, what, what happens with infrared divergence, their cancellation is due to uh, emission to the uh, considering a, uh, a process a Feynman diagram where I remove one loop but I introduce uh, sorry yeah one I remove one vertex which corresponds to one loop and uh, and uh, I introduce an emission of um, a photon of a, or a particle or massless particle from an external line. So in the case of soft divergence, I have to introduce to, to um, the, the emitted particle has to have uh, uh, low energy and momentum to be soft. And in the case of um, collinear divergence, it has to be collinear with the external particles. All right, so in, in the case of QED, then we, we have to have to emit a soft particle, a particle of low energy and low momentum. Um, so, so let's consider um, this part of the diagram. I call, I call it M0. And it's, uh, it's the part that, um, whose correction we are in, uh, looking at. So, uh, before we were looking at the one loop correction to the three uh, uh, vertex. Therefore, the amplitude here is the three vertex. So M0 in our case is the three vertex. But I put M0 because we'll see that in, in terms of infrared divergence, it doesn't really matter what M0 is. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so we have uh, we have M zero, and then out of so part of M zero are two external uh, uh, external uh, fermion lines, P one and P two with momentum P one coming in and momentum P two coming out. So the other one would be with Q uh, photon Q coming. In. So let's emit a, uh, a photon of momentum k corresponding to the loop momentum um, of the uh, of the correction to the vertex before. Uh, so let's assume that this uh, momentum k is very small. So it's smaller than smaller than the incoming momentum. Uh, so the momentum of the uh, uh, photon coming in here with Q. So K, K1 is, so, so K is much smaller than Q in terms of 
spatial momentum. So in this case, the sub diagram M0 is the same for the same one. So, uh, so let's go back to the, let's go back to the uh, diagram. So this would be M0. So to M0, I've here I've added uh, a photon connecting the two fermion lines. Now I, I add a photon being emitted, right? So these are the, the two, um, the two Feynman diagrams that I, uh, I add. The, the correction with a photon line in between the fermion lines and the correction with a photon line being emitted. And M0 is this three vertex. So M0 is the same for both now. So as before, as now, the momentum is soft. The momentum of the added photon is soft, is uh, small. So, uh, yeah, so this is the same on M0 because this K is small. So then I can write the amplitude for emission of a photon from an external line this way. So I, well, I have this uh, U bar, then I have this M0, then I have the emission uh, of the photon. So there's a propagator for, uh, for the um, there's a propagator for the fermion, a, a vertex, and the polarization for the photon, and then the uh, uh, external uh, uh, incoming uh, fermion, and then so this is for uh, so I have to add the photon being emitted from P2 or being from, emitted from P1. So it's either P1 minus K or P2 plus K. So I have to um, add these two corrections. And then as before, the momenta uh, P1 and P2 are on shell. So P1 squared plus M squared is zero, P2 squared plus P M squared is zero. So then in the denominator, I have the same minus 2p1.k or plus 2p2.k. Uh, and k is small, so I can ignore this k slash here in the numerator with compared to these things, which are large. So, uh, and also I have to, um, I can use these identities that p the, the resulting things p slash plus i m p one slash plus i m times gamma mu a, in uh, epsilon mu uh, star of k u of p one is equal to well i uh, i write uh, yeah, I, I write this combination using um, using gamma mu gamma nu plus gamma nu gamma nu is equal to two g mu nu. So so I write I write one term that as two terms in this way, and then in here I can use uh, the Dirac equation for for uh, uh, p one. So I'm left with this. So, um, and similarly, I can prove uh, another equation. And so in the end, I, I have the same M0 in between the external state e bar, U bar P2 and U P1 as I had in the uh, original, um, in the un uncorrected, uh, uh, uncorrected uh, diagram times E times this uh, combination of uh, momenta. But now I have to integrate over 
uh, the momentum of the photon, integrate over k, and sum over these polarizations. All right, so in terms of the uh, cross section, uh, in terms of the cross section, then I have the cross section. So this will give the cross same cross section. Then I will have, but the cross section is the amplitudes uh, squared. So I have this factor uh, modulus squared, right? And then summed and uh, I mean integrated over k and summed over polarization. Um, uh, given this factor. Um, but then, so, so the, this is the cross-section for uh, fermion with P1 going to fermion of P2 plus soft momentum, soft photon, equal to the same cross-section P1 going to P2, but without the soft photon, but multiply by this which means that this thing is a differential probability to emit a photon from the external, a soft photon from external line, this thing. <clears throat> now, uh, so now I have to integrate over the modulus of K, right? So I have 1 over k here and 1 over k squared from this term. So this will be, again, a log divergence, right? Since k, when k goes to 0. Um, <clears throat> so this is still an integral dk over k, times something, some i that I will not calculate here. One can calculate and is described in, uh, well, I think in uh, Beskin and Schroeder or something, and is given by this 2 log q squared of m squared over m squared. But the important thing for, for us for the moment is that there's an in log divergence. So there's d3k over k cubed. And it's multiplied by e squared, um, which implies an alpha. So with the normalization, it's alpha over pi times i. So such, this is the definition of i. And then you can calculate, as we said, i is equal to this. Now, the integral of a k uh, is. Um, from what? Normally, the divergence is when this goes from is, goes from zero. To regularize this, we put a photon mass, but then it can only go. Um, it can only start at that photon mass. It can only start at new photon, and it can go up to what? Well, k was we said that was much smaller than the the, the momentum of the other photon. The photon uh, in the in the tree um, in the tree uh, amplitude. So the integral is um, approximately between mu photon and q. So that means I get a log q squared over mu physical squared times alpha for the two pi times i, which, as we said, is this. All right, so the so the the cross section for p1 going to p2 plus uh, uh, plus the photon is uh, the the cross section from p1 going to p2 times this probability. So uh, so. So this, um, so the, the differential um, cross section with emission of photon is the one without emission of photon times this factor, alpha over pi uh, log q squared over m squared times log q squared over mu 
physical squared. On the other hand, <clears throat> given the um, so given that we've calculated the uh, f1 structure function from the loop correction, the loop correction is absolute value squared of f1, which was 1 minus alpha over 2 pi times log over q squared, log over q squared over uh, mu physical squared. So absolute value squared is approximately uh, that means it's approximately 1 minus alpha over pi instead of 2 pi. Then log q squared over m squared, log q squared over q, uh, physical squared. So now you see that the sum of the differential cross sections of the two processes, the one loop corrected and the one corrected by soft emission, is no, no longer infrared divergent because these two infrared divergent terms cancel in the sum. More physically, we can uh, consider a detector that only emits, only uh, that has energy re resolution E minimum, that means it cannot detect photons of smaller energy. So then in the integration here, I integrate from mu physical, not to Q. Anyway, we said that K must be much smaller than Q, so that was kind of uh, forced. So integrate from mu physical to E minimum, because that's what one we cannot detect, whether or not we have emitted a soft photon with energy smaller than E minimum. And we can also prove exactly, which will not do, that i is equal to 2 fir of q squared. So then the uh, d sigma d omega, the differential cross section for soft emission with momenta smaller than e minimum is the one without times alpha over pi fir times this log e squared uh, minimum over mu physical squared. And as before, we had the differential cross section uh, corrected by uh, one loop, V1 minus alpha over pi, the same FIR, log Q squared or M squared over mu physical squared. So in the sum now, we see that the infrared divergence does cancel, but we are left with something non trivial we are left with a log of q squared or m squared divided by e minimum squared multiplied with minus alpha of pi fir q squared. So I do have an, um, a, a Sudakov double log here, but uh, in the correction, but now it's a physical one Everything here is physical. The FIR log is physical. This is physical in the sense that there is a, a, a minimum um, detector energy. So the infrared divergence has been removed and we're left with a Sudakov double log that is physical. Okay, now this was at one loop. Now, what about higher loops? Well, uh, you know, we can, we can resum. So we've seen that uh, the soft divergence was due to, um, to a correction with a soft uh, photon going between two fermion lines. Now we can resum um, diagrams with many soft photons being uh, um, exchange between the uh, uh, fermion lines. And in the same way that we sketched for in the Altarelli-Parisi evolution equation, we can just resum these processes and this will give just uh, this Sudakov double log to the power n. So each 
process will give this duck of down double log to the power n. Moreover, each so so this is this corresponds to the fermion lines and then uh, the photons being exchanged between them, right? <clears throat> so now the Sudakov double, uh, the, the sorry, the, the the photons, the n photons being exchanged between the two fermion lines, are indistinguishable. So I have to, uh, I cannot overcount. I have to divide therefore by n factorial. So I have this factor to the n over n factorial summed over. So that gives an exponent, right? So we get the ex uh, exponent of this Sudakov double log. All right, this was sketched to the extreme, uh, but this can be proven, the fact that infrared divergences exponentiate can be rigorously proven, was proven in a theorem by Bloch and Nordzek in 37. Um, <clears throat> now, what I've described in this lecture was the QED vertex at one loop, but one important properties of, of infrared divergences is the property known as factorization, which means that uh, um, in some physical process, like the physical of scattering process of scattering that we've considered here, electron plus photon going to an electron, uh, we can divide the contributions that are soft, that you can divide the, the, the contributions, the soft and hard contributions, and they factorize in the, in the way described in this, um, in this diagram. So I have, so the, the, the physical process will be a hard part, meaning um, a, a process with uh, high, momenta, high momenta everywhere, times a soft part, which means a part with soft, uh, with, uh, soft uh, photons, either being emitted like here or being ex exchanged like here, the sum of which gives the, um, gives the infrared, ex um, infrared uh, exponent, exponent. All right, so we've seen that then that the soft virtual photons gives this uh, factor to the n over n factorial that exponentiates when we sum. Um, and, um, and then the same thing will happen for, uh, so the same thing happens for the, the soft real photons. Um, it also exponentiate. So in conclusion, we find this uh, exponent of the, um, we find this exponent <clears throat> of the, um, of the uh, soft loop corrections with a minus sign an exponent of the soft emitted part with a plus sign. So, of course, the exponent minus something times exponent plus something is exponent of the difference. And the difference of these things gives log of Q squared divided by E squared minimum. So, in the physical, in the measured process, we have the three process times the, ex, the, the, the exponent, the Sudakov form factor, which is this exponent of minus alpha over pi, F I R log Q squared over M squared. All right, 
Now, you might say, well, um, I only did, uh, I only actually calculated for you a one loop co correction and plus a one soft fault on emission. I haven't talked about two loops. I kind of sketched the fact that these things exponentiate, but I also in emphasize the fact that they, what, what exponentiates is the resumming of, of some Feynman diagrams where these things go like this, but there are much, much, uh, there are all kinds of other uh, Feynman diagrams. All right. So that means that this exponent in here of infrared divergences is not uh, true to all orders. It's um, the point is ex um, infrared divergences do exponentiate. But this exponent is not something supposed to be uh, exact to all orders in alpha. You, you cannot just expand this in alpha and expect the result to be uh, exact. So what will happen in the end, since ex infrared divergences do exponentiate, but, um, um, but we've only calculated things to one loop, is that the true result is exponent of this thing to one loop plus alpha squared times something else coming from two loops plus alpha cubed coming uh, times something else coming from three loops and so on. Okay, so there will, there will be an exponent of an infinite sum out of which we've just calculated the first term. All right, so that was all that I wanted to tell you today. Uh, do you have any questions? In this exponentiation, uh, the three level diagrams aren't included, right? In this 21. So the, three level, the three level, uh, yeah, the three level means just zero, this, this uh, zero thing. So d sigma d omega zero uh, is just the three level um, uh, process, the three level uh, Feynman diagram. So all of these things, right? So, the, uh, so all of these things are uh, corrections to it, right? So, so you see, I have exponent of uh, something times exponent of something. So this is one plus stuff times one plus stuff. So there's this times one times one is the leading term. So that's the uh, three. Um, the three um, uh, contribution. Okay. There's all orders in three level diagrams in this term. So, no, 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 no. I mean, this this sigma d omega. This is just uh, this process. The well, sorry, sorry, I cannot draw this. Well, the fermion fermion photon process. The, so the amplitude squared gives. Uh, d sigma d omega zero, right? The, the, this is the three contribution, right? Okay. So, so from the from the exponent, the, you just keep one. So the point is that all of the other contributions are the the same three contribution times something else, right? Okay. And uh, the, the, other po the other point that I made is that uh, the infrared divergences do exponentiate. So, uh, so the true result looks like an exponent of a sum in uh, powers of alpha. I mean, of course, you can just expand the exponent and then uh, write, rewrite things as a normal sum in powers of alpha. But uh, it's important to re rewrite it like this because, um, yeah, because uh, in this way things are uh, things are simpler, and you know the the kind of structure you expect. So that first order, you have this duck of double log, and then you have some other logs, and so okay.
Other questions? All right, so if there are no other questions, I'll uh, um, uh, I'll st stop and uh, I'll see you on Thursday at nine. Okay, bye.